Hi guys, this is Jeff at Slayton's Racing. This video is about uh, a clutch issue that's uh, well known but not super common. So you don't need to, you know, get too worried about this. But if you walk out to your garage to service your bike for the next ride, or maybe you just grabbing your bike to throw it in the truck for a current ride, um, and you grab that clutch lever, and it pulls in super easy, like there's, like it's not uh, doing anything to the clutch. You know, just super flimsy, like 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 it's not even hooked up to anything. <clears throat> well, that if, if, at that point, if you remove the cap on your clutch master cylinder and look inside, you will probably discover that there's no fluid in there. <clears throat> so where did the fluid go? Well, it actually went into your engine oil. That's not a big panic either. It's a small amount of fluid. It's probably not going to do any any damage, so you know don't get too hyped up about that. But there's so I've got two different types of clutch slave cylinders here because this is where the problem lies. This is the OEM one, and this is a recluse one. So this is mine, and it just failed recently, and uh, so I'll, I'll go over that in just a minute. Uh, and by the way, we have all these rebuild parts in stock to fix this problem. Um, so on the stock ones, right, to remove it from the bike, first you just remove these three bolts. This piece that's right in front of the counter shaft sprocket. Remove those three bolts, pull this thing out. Um, actually, let's back up a little bit. Before you remove those three bolts, loosen this bolt just right here that holds the the uh, hydraulic line on there. So loosen that up and then pull this off and then unscrew that line so that you can take this over the workbench. Uh, wrap a rag around the line because it's going to drip a little fluid out, make a little bit of a mess. All right, so once you've got that out, you can see here the stock one on this model. I don't know if all models have it, but on this model it's got a, a spring in here, so don't lose that. That spring fits into here, and that goes into there. All right, so two things that fail on these stock ones. One is this O-ring right here, and the other is this rubber diaphragm. And we have kits that include the piston with the diaphragm and the O-ring, and they're cheap. I'm going to say they're like $30, $35 or something like that. So you just need to buy that kit, put this back together, this just slides in there, and then bleed the system. I've got a separate video on how to bleed the clutch. All right, so when you take this apart, this is down inside of this bore here, and it just doesn't, come from, it doesn't just fall out. So what you have to do is blow a little compressed air into this hole while, you're, while you've got your hand over this part. Otherwise, you're going to shoot it across the room. So, compressed air in there, doesn't take much, and this piston will come out into your hand. It doesn't hurt, anything like that. All right, so the recluse is very similar, and you do the same thing to get it apart. You blow air in here, and the piston will come out. <clears throat> But this ball bearing part always faces towards the engine. I don't know if you can see that little ball bearing in there. There's one in here. It's, it's all packed in grease from the factory. Uh, and if you clean this with, after you take these O-rings and quad ring off, uh, if you clean this with compressed air, you can blow that ball bearing out of there and shoot it across the room somewhere. So, you know, keep your thumb across that as you're cleaning this. So the main failure point on the recluses is this quad ring. All right, you can see that this piston has two grooves on it, whereas the stock one just has one with an O-ring in it. And one of them has a quad ring, the other one has an O-ring. Alright, so the quad ring fits in the wider groove. One groove is 2 millimeters wide, the other groove is 2.4 millimeters wide. And the quad ring fits into that wider groove. Uh, and this one is going to be hard to see on the video because it's not that damaged, but it's got a definite damaged spot right in here. Sometimes they even get twisted, and it's real obvious, but it's this quad ring that fails. 
But while you're in there, you should change all the O-rings. So this O-ring fits on the smaller groove. Uh, the big O-ring here fits in this groove here. And then there's a gasket also that goes with it. Um, don't call me on this. I'm not positive. I think there's some models that don't have the gasket. They just have the O-ring. But I could be wrong on that. But look on your microfish, and you can figure it out from there. Uh, if this happens, to, this is the push rod. So the way the system works is right, this uh, piece here is going to fit against that adjuster. And then this ball bearing pushes against this rod. And this rod is inside the motor, inside the main shaft, and it uh, pushes on the pressure plate and the clutch and lifts the clutch pack. All right, if this happens to fall out and you don't know which way it goes back in, well, the rounded end goes in the motor. This uh, end with a divot in it is to push against this ball. All right, guys, I hope that uh, clears up a few things for you. So just to review, if you go out to your garage, pull in your clutch lever, it's kind of a natural thing when we grab our bikes. We just have to pull in that clutch lever and flip the throttle when the motor's not even running. I don't know, it's just kind of a habit we all seem to have. Anyhow, if you grab that clutch lever and it pulls in super easy, you'll know instantly that you've got a problem, especially if you try to stick it in gear. Um, but uh, that's, that's the issue. The f this piece down here has failed and the fluid has leaked down in your motor oil. So I, I do recommend that you change the motor oil also at that point. Um, obviously, if you're out on a trip or something, it's not as big of a deal. You, you can continue to ride it, but change it whenever you can. And you don't have to readjust the clutch um, on, on the recluse models. The stock ones, you know, there's nothing to adjust there. It's not, it's a non-adjustable unit. I think that's about it, guys. So uh, if you have this problem, this should fix you up. Uh, we currently don't have all these little parts on our website. We're, we'll get them on there eventually. But if you need them, just give us a call or email alec, A-L-E-C, at slavensracing.com and he can hook you up. Uh, we also have an instant chat uh, during business hours. You can contact us via that. And please like us on Instagram and Facebook and uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Give us a shout out when you can. Throw us a bone when you can. And get out for some throttle therapy. That's all for now.